Yes. So the uh, narrow issue we are raising in this writ petition is only on the uh -huh. uh, issue of uh, eligibility criterion yes. for Malayala Brahmins. Yes. That's the only narrow issue, sir, not the other issue. So I'd like to uh, begin, sir, with all respect and humility, first of all, thanking you for this opportunity, and then to reflect on why, why we are here, sir, considering this yes. issue. I think we are here because there is so you are you are only on that uh, restrictive clause on that that's restricted. only on that issue sir malayala brahman whether it is uh, constitutionally permitted to restrict eligibility to only malayala brahmins uh -huh. that's the only issue sir on in this writ petition yes <clears throat> so the we are here because the consti the, the constitution um, lays out certain rights and those rights conflict with this provision that we are challenging. If there was no constitution, we would not be here, sir. Yes. Because there's a clash between the con some constitution value and this provision. And so I think our focus should be on what that constitution value is and whether it is overriding or not. And I would submit, sir, in addition to equality, the core constitutional value at stake here is untouchability. Mm. Uh, Article 17, uh, not only prohibits but criminalizes untouchability. Yes. It is probably the only, to my knowledge, limited knowledge, it's the only constitution in the world which creates a crime. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, this is not an IPC crime, it's a constitutional crime, untouchability. Mm -hmm. And um, underneath that crime yes. of untouchability, sir, is a belief that by birth, some human beings are pure and some are less pure. I've referred to that in my written submissions, which I've given to you, sir. I've given yes. the, the authorities yes. saying that. Basically, the belief that some human beings are born pure and the others are born impure. Mm -hmm. In fact, the word caste, it's a Port Portuguese word, is actually a word that means separating the pure from the impure. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it was a very precise usage referring to the belief that human beings are impure. Ah. So that is why, sir, the two, uh, the two uh, petitioners that uh, Mr. Rajesh represents and I'm also representing uh, belong to non-Brahmin castes, uh, highly experienced, fully qualified. And the, we have to ask ourselves, why are they being, de being denied the right to apply to be male, male Shanti of Shabarimala? Why are yes. they being denied? Yes. It is not the constitution. It is not a set of laws or regulations. It is a belief that they are impure by birth. And when you say Brahmin, you are saying a group that is pure by birth. There is no other basis to exclude them from being considered to be male Shanti of Shabarimala, except the belief yes. that they are impure. Mm. So the question is, sir, can we uphold such a belief, in which case we are abrogating the constitution? Yes. Whatever the details may be, sir, whatever the details may be of administrative law, which we have been looking at, we cannot abrogate the constitution's belief that no human being can be considered impure by birth. So the bottom line is, sir, history will look back at this high court's judgment. We'll all be, highless, be, be gone, mm -hmm. dead and gone before long. But history will remember whether this court abrogated the constitution on Article 17 or not, yes. or whether it upheld the principle that no human being can be considered impure and excluded only for that purpose. Whether Brahmin is a class or a caste doesn't matter, sir. These are, this is hair splitting, sir. Uh, 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 what the name is, it is the belief, the underlying belief that has to be uh, destroyed, sir. Now, given not only on this issue, but similar issues, that there is a conscious and deliberate attempt by the constitution to change some of these beliefs so that mm. the country can move forward. Mm. We have in Article 25, sir, an extraordinary provision, which is probably not there in a, many other, if any, constitution. In Article 25, 2, as you know well, sir, that enables a state 
to make law or apply existing, sorry, sorry, Article 25 too, sir. forgive me. Sir. <clears throat> Yes, Article 25.2, sir, says nothing in this article shall affect the operation of any existing law or prevent the state from making any law, I'm moving to B, providing for social welfare and reform or the throwing open of Hindu religious institutions of a public character to all classes and sections of people, of Hindus, sorry. Now, this throwing open is not simply the opportunity to go and stand outside and pray, sir. It is yes. also the throwing open of the opportunity to be a male shanti, sir. Yes. So that the disabilities that were attached to them are removed. We also have, sir, a... Uh, as a Sir, the, ah. um, in the uh, judgment of Shabrimala judgment, sir, Indian Young Lawyers Association yes. and others versus State of Kerala. The, uh, so your, your uh, article uh, 2000 and, 2019. The given is that uh, this uh, throwing open Hindu religious institution. Yes. Uh, not, not only permitting entry, but uh, all. In all uh, all functions, all sir. Functions and all. all functions, sir. So that yes. we, so that the underlying belief is what is being attacked, sir. That some human beings are impure and others are pure. That is what the constitution is attacking, sir. The practice of that has been criminalized, uh -huh. but that's the ideology that we are attacking, sir. So that our essential hum equal humanity uh -huh. is recognized, and yes. so uh, so the constitution has gone to that extent to give power both in Article 17 and 25 mm -hmm. to be. But, sir, there is the judiciary has evolved, sir. A yeah. very, very, very sophisticated mechanism to resolve this conflict between the need to protect constitution values mm -hmm. and the need to have, have freedom of religion and to ensure that both are protected in a, yes. in a balanced and harmonious manner. And you are very familiar with that jurisprudence. But I would like to summarize that, sir, in, uh, uh, if, if you look at the judgment, sir, 2019-11 SCC, Indian Young Lawyers Association, the Shabrimala case, judgment of Justice uh, Nariman, sir. Page one. Sir, uh, you. Yes. Sir, uh, page number 139, para 176, sir. After very succinctly and eloquently summarizing 15 of the leading cases on page number one, 139, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, para? Para 176. 176. Sir. So before this one, para 176, Justice Nariman very eloquently ah. and succinctly summarizes some 15 leading judgments on the ah. issue of, on this issue of how to reconcile constitutional values and rights and the right to religion. And then he says, a conspectus of these judgments leads to the following propositions. Mm. So it's a very excellent summary of yes. the of the of how the judiciary is trying to to ensure constitutional rights are upheld against yes. contrary religious beliefs. Article twenty five recognizes a fundamental right in favor of all persons, which has reference to natural persons, to natural persons, not to uh, to to re religious institutions. This fundamental right equally ent entitles all such persons to the said fundamental right 
every member of a religious community has a right to practice the religion so long as he does not in any way interfere with the corresponding right of his co-religionists to do the same. The content of the fundamental right is a fleshing out of what is stated in the preamble to the Constitution as liberty of thought, belief, faith, and worship. Thus, all persons are entitled to freedom of conscience and the right to freely profess, practice, and propagate religion. Now I move to 176.6, sir. Just yes. a couple paragraphs down. It is only the essential part of religion. As distinguished from secular activities, that is a subject matter of the fundamental right. Superstitious beliefs which are extraneous, unnecessary accretions to religion, cannot be considered as essential parts of religion. Matters that are essential to religious faith and or belief are to be judged on evidence before a court of law by what the, com by what the community professing the religion itself has to say as to the essentiality of such belief. One test that has been evolved would be to remove the particular belief stated to be an essential belief from the religion. Would the religion remain the same or would it be altered? Equally, if different groups of a religious community speak with different voices on the essentiality aspect presented before the court, the court is then to decide as to whether such matter is or is not essential. Religious activities may also be mixed up with secular activities, in which case the dominant nature of the activity test is to be applied. The court should take a common sense, common sense view and be actuated by considerations of practical necessity. Yes, yes sir. Then I go, sir, to 176.11. Contrasted with the fundamental right in Article 25.1 is the fundamental right granted by Article 26, which is what is being claimed here. 26b to be particular. This fundamental right is not granted to individuals, but to religious denominations. And it has been held, I'll come to this later, it has been held that Shabarimala is not a denominational temple and uh, they cannot claim rights under 26, the temple. A religious denomination or section thereof is to be determined on the basis of persons having a common faith a common organization and designated by a distinct name as a denomination or section thereof. Believers of a particular religion are to be distinguished from denominational worshippers. Thus, Hindu believers of Shaivite and Vaishnavite form of worship are not denominational worshippers, but part of the general Hindu religious form of worship. Four separate and distinct rights are given by Article 26 to religious denominations or sections thereof, namely, and I go to B, to manage its own affairs in matters of religion, which includes, for example, appointing only Malayala Brahmins as uh, male Shantis. As in Article 25, it is only essential religious matters which are protected by this article. Yes. And then it goes on to the exception, sir. And then I go to 176.14. It is clear that even though the entry of persons into a, into a Hindu, Hindu temple of public character would pertain to management of its own affairs in matters of religion, yet such temple entry, and I would say, sir, that the right to worship and be a male shanti is equally part of temple entry, sir. Otherwise, you have only a right to enter the outer precincts of a temple, sir. Yes. You're, you're confined to the uh, what the the Mughals used to call Divane Am. You are not allowed inside Divane Khas, which is a yes. sanctum sanctorum. However, religious practices by the religious denomination or section thereof, which do not have the effect of either a complete ban on temple entry of certain pen, uh, persons or otherwise not discriminatory, are not discriminatory, may pass muster under Article 26b. If even if they are denominational, sir, even if they are denominational, they should not be discriminatory. Examples of such practices are that only certain qualified persons are allowed to enter the sanctum sanctorum of a temple or time management of a temple in which all persons are shut out for certain periods. These are not discriminatory practices. Yes. These are uh, based on essential qualifications, competence. So what, what we are saying here, sir, is that we can look we respect the freedom of religion with respect to the essential nature of religion and religious practices. But we, yes. the constitution draws a line when you look at the essential nature of human beings, 
based yes. on your beliefs and say this is born as a lesser human and the other is born as a superior human and the, on that basis institute practices under 26b which are discriminatory and that is prohibited so it is on this basis that we look at the decision in adityan sir in the supreme court decision in, in adityan which i would like to uh, to read a few parts out it is a, 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 a 2002 decision sir and you may wish to note sir that this decision comes a few months after the decision of the kerala high court mm. which approved condition number 1 the decision of the kerala high court that approved condition number 1 came before the aditi and supreme court judgment we are we are having and i would take it sir that that condition number 1 was by operation of law yes. unconstitutional the moment aditi and judgment was pronounced and therefore it could not have been part of any arbitration or mediation proceedings thereafter sir because the moment the uh, the supreme court pronounced the aditi and judgment and said you cannot have a restriction uh, on malayala brahmins then that condition of of eligibility was struck if in effect became illegal and unconstitutional so we so can sir, take it that then uh, judgment is on uh, 310 2002 sorry sir 310 2002 that judgment 2002 sir yes sir and the other judgment is i will tell you So the uh, Supreme Court judgment of Adityan uh, is on 3rd October 2002 yes. and the, and the uh, two judge bench of in RR Varma versus TDB is 14th August 2002. 14th August 2002. And therefore, as of 3rd October 2002, condition number one became illegal. Yes. And so it could not have been part of any mediation or any other proceedings. Mm. And it was never raised to the Supreme Court, sir. It was we should take it that the Supreme Court never considered that that first clause, sir, because he could not have considered it. It had already struck it down. Mm. So it cannot be part of the of the of the of the mediation and the compromise and so on, sir, because of the sequence of yes. events. Which are the paragraphs in uh, uh, Adityan you want to play? Yes, I, I will just come to Adityan, sir. I will just come to Adityan, sir. So the first I want to say, sir, the issue raised in Adityan ah. is on all fours with the issue raised here. It is said in the first paragraph, the question is whether the appointment of a person who is not a Malayala Brahmin as Shantikaran or Pujari of the temple in question uh, that temple is violative of constitutional and statutory rights of the appellant. That's exactly the question being discussed here. Now the question is, sir, let's look at the reasoning to see, where, you know, on what basis the the Devasum board argues that this judgment is not applicable to Shabarimala temple. It's not a denominational temple. The Adityan judgment applies to all Hindu temples. Yes. It cannot claim claim protection under twenty five B. So unless the Davis from board is a board is a court higher than the Supreme Court, how can they say this does not apply, sir, to yes. the to, to the yes. uh, Shabarimala Temple, sir? We should also uh, note, sir, in paragraph five, Sri R F Nariman, learned senior counsel as he then was, contended that the appellant failed to properly plead or establish any usage as claimed. And this being a disputed question of fact cannot be permitted to be agitated in the teeth of the specific finding of the Kerala High Court to the contrary. So in this, till today, sir, till today, the bald claim that this is a traditional custom or usage has not been established ah. through proper pleadings or proper evidence. Nothing more than a bald claim, sir. So it doesn't even yeah. deserve to be considered. Now, let us move, sir, to uh, paragraph 17, sir, paragraph 17, <clears throat> which explains in what circumstances a temple can legitimately say 
uh. that only people who belong to a particular group should be the priests yes that is not that is not wrong sir under constitutional law that is not wrong there are legitimate grounds where somebody can say only people from a particular group can be priests in that temple what are those grounds it is explained in paragraph 17 sir when a temple has been constructed and consecrated as per agamas it is considered necessary to perform the daily rituals pujas and recitations as required to maintain the sanctity of the idol and it is not that in respect of any and every temple, any such uniform rigor of rituals can be sought to be enforced. The horse its origin, the manner of construction or method of consecration. No doubt only a qualified person, well-versed and properly trained for the purpose alone can perform pujas in the temple since he has not only to enter into the sanctum sanctorum, but also touch the idol installed therein. Here it is to ensure that the idol is touched in the proper way, sir. Not yes. to say that a person is impure by birth and therefore he cannot touch the idol. It therefore goes without saying that what is required and expected of one to perform the rituals and conduct pujas is to know the rituals to be performed and mantras as necessary to be recited for the particular deity and the method of worship ordained or fixed therefore. For example, in Shaivite temples, Vaishnavite temples, only a person who learned the necessary rites and mantras conducive to be performed and recited in the respective temples and appropriate to the worship of the particular deity could be engaged as an archaka. Mm. If traditionally or conventionally in any temple, all along a Brahmin alone was conducting pujas or performing the job of Shantikaran, it may not be because a person other than the Brahmin is prohibited from doing so, but because he is not a, uh, because he is not a Brahmin. Because the prohibited person is not a Brahmin, but those others were not in a position. And as a matter of fact, were prohibited from learning, reciting or mastering Vedic literature, rites or performance of rituals and wearing sacred thread by getting initiated into the order and thereby acquiring the right to perform home and ritualistic forms of worship in public or private temples. Consequently, there is no justification to insist that a Brahmin or a Malayala Brahmin in this case alone can perform the rites and rituals in the temple as part of the rights and freedom guaranteed under Article 25 of the Constitution and further claim that any deviation would tant be tantamount to violation of any such guarantee under the Constitution. There can be no claim based upon Article 26 so far as the temple under our consideration is concerned. Apart from this principle enunciated above, as long as anyone, as long as anyone well versed and properly trained and qualified to perform the puja in any man manner conducive and appropriate to the worship of the particular deity is appointed as Shantikaran, de horse his pedigree based on caste. De horse his pedigree based on caste. No valid or legally justifiable grievance can be made in a court of law. This is a general proposition that applies to all of India, sir. Mm. All of India. And no temple in India is exempt from this, sir. This is the Supreme Court of India, sir. I want to ask whether the Travancore Devaswam board is bound by Article 141 or not, sir. Yes. Let us, let us recall 141. Probably they're not familiar with it, sir. Let me read it for their benefit, sir. It says, the law declared by the Supreme Court shall be binding on all courts within the territory of India. This is the law declared by the Supreme Court. Yes. So the question is, sir, why are we even having these proceedings, sir? This matter is res judicata, sir. Yes. Is that where it comes from? The fact, this question that we have raised, sir, is res judicata because the Supreme Court has decided that de horse caste. Yes. You cannot have a caste based or class based. You cannot. It's, they've said Brahmin or Malayala Brahmin cannot be a condition to be a priest. It must yes. be properly trained. So. This is the law of the land, a general proposition of law, sir, not applicable to a particular temple of one or the other, not meant on the facts and circumstances of a particular temple. In fact, if you take the facts and circumstances of a particular temple into account, sir, Shabarimala temple and this Shiva temple are on all four, sir, because they are both not denominational temples. They both claim that they had ancient rituals and custom and usage. So it's a similar situation, sir. Temples that are not denominational temples, which claim that there is an ancient, uh, ancient uh, custom and usage that only Brahmins will worship, yes. are, uh, are uh, before the Supreme Court. 
that category of temples. And the Supreme Court has clearly said for all temples, but certainly for this category of temples, such a restriction is unconstitutional. Sir, uh, para 18, sir, I'm not uh, reading extensively. Just uh, if you go down the pa page, sir, to E, just above between D and E, sir, para 18. Yes. While that be the position to insist that the person concerned should be a member of a particular caste, born of particular parents of his caste, can neither be said to be an insistence upon an essential religious practice, rite, ritual, observance, or mode of worship for temples such as that Shiva temple or the similarly situated Shabrimala temple, non-denominational temple, yes. but even for denominational temples. Uh, in the case nor has any proper or sufficient basis for asserting such a claim been made out, nor has any proper or sufficient basis for asserting such a claim been made out either on facts or in law in the case before us also. The decision in Shirud Mat case and the subsequent decisions rendered by this court had to deal with the broad principles of law and the scope of the scheme of rights guaranteed under Article 25 and 26 of the Constitution in the peculiar context of the issues raised in. Invalidation of a provision empowering the commissioner and his subordinates, as well as persons authorized by him to ent enter any religious institution or, or of place of worship in an unregulated manner by persons who are not connected with spiritual functions, has been considered to violate rights under 25 and 26, cannot help the appellant to contend that even persons duly qualified, my, our clients, sir, mm. me, Duly qualified client, uh, persons can be prohibited on the, on the ground that the, such person is not a Brahmin by birth or pedigree. This is yes. directly applicable to me, sir. Directly applicable to me. Mm -hmm. um, none of the earlier decisions rendered before, before the Sheshamal case related to consideration of any rights based on caste origin and even Sheshamal uh, related to consideration of any rights based on caste origin and even Sheshamal case dealt with only the facet of rights claimed on the basis of hereditary succession. And therefore, this is uh, the, 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 this stands alone, sir, now coming to the, the uh, page 125, sir, the, the conclusion, any custom or usage, sir, is between just above B, sir, two lines above B. Yes. Any custom or usage, irrespective of even any proof of their existence in pre-constitutional days, cannot be countenanced as a source of law to claim any rights when it is found to violate human rights, dignity, social equality. So very broad statement sir, by the Supreme Court. Any custom or usage, irrespective of even any proof of their existence in pre-constitutional days, yes. cannot be countenanced as a source of law to claim any rights yes. when it is found to violate human rights, dignity, social equality, and the specific mandate of the constitution and law made by parliament. No usage which is found to be pernicious and considered to be in derogation of the law of the land or opposed to public policy or social decency can be up accepted or upheld by courts in the country. Sir, I, with greatest respect and all humility, sir, mm. I think this court is bound by the precedent in, in yes. Adityan, in this, in, uh, in, in this decision, the Supreme Court, in deciding this matter. For the reason stated Supra, Para 19, no exception in our view could be taken to the conclusions arrived at by the full bench of the Kerala High Court and no interference is called for with the same in our hands. In other words, the very wonderful judgment of the, uh, for the full bench of the Kerala High Court, written by Justice Katie Thomas, I think is almost uh, incorporated by reference sir, into the Supreme Court judgment and fully endorsed. Yes. So now I would like to turn, sir, to, uh, to a 2015 judgment, sir, uh, in, uh, uh, by Justice uh, uh, Ranjan Gogoi in Adi Shaiva uh, Shiva Charya, to which you, you had referred. No, I'm just pointing that you had referred to that, my learned uh, colleague yes. here. Um, Sir, there, in, at the end of paragraph 41, I, that this, this, I don't know the paragraph number here. Uh, uh, there is a, uh, let me see if the same paragraph number, sir. I think it should be the same. Um, you, you are a, um, the referring para no, the no, paragraph there is the difficulty lies in not understanding. Sheshama. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yes. Sir, I'm reading a sentence at the end of the paragraph that begins with Seshamal Supra. I'll just find it, sir. I'll just find it. No, we are also having Seshamal. I'm, I'm having another uh, question, which uh, ah. I'll just find it in one second, sir. Seshamal Supra, paragraph starting with Seshamal Supra. Adishai. Seshamal Supra, no, it is a Sir, I'll just read that sentence and I'll give you the oh. sentence. Sir. The, it says the constitutional legitimacy, constitutional legit, legitimacy must supersede all religious beliefs or practices. Constitutional legitimacy must must uh, supersede all religious beliefs or practices. And I'll give you the reference uh, shortly. Sir. So now I'd like to turn to. Uh, Sir, I'd like to turn back to the Shabrimala case judgment. Uh -huh. sir. Shabrimala judgment. Which is, which is a relevant paragraph in 2016 to? Uh, yes, sir. I'll just give you the paragraph. Five zero. Five zero. I'll find it. I I have another. I have the Supreme Court's version, sir. Or the 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 Judas version of the Supreme Court. No, Seshamal Allah. 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 Simply. And that paragraph starts with Seshamal. Allah, Allah. No, sir. No, sir. No, 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 sir. No, sir. That's not the reference, sir. In the Judas version, it is uh, at the end of para 41. End of para 41. This statement I'm reading, sir. The constitutional leg legitimacy naturally must supersede all that religious is, uh, beliefs or uh, practices. That is paragraph 48. 41, sir. 48. 48. 48. Okay, sir. That's the last sentence in that paragraph. Sir. Yes, yes. yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I, I have this Judas version, sir. Ah. That's the the downward, downloaded from Supreme Court. Uh, yeah. Yes. And uh, yes, sir. And uh, so, um, sir, I'd like to now turn to uh, um, back to Shabri Mala, sir, and uh, point out that uh, in the just Justice uh, Nariman's judgment, sir, on uh, in page uh, paragraph 172, page 136. That is in 2018, sir. 2018, as you know, huh. a constitution bench of the Supreme Court has extensively quoted and approved by reference, by a reference uh, approvingly referred to. Adityan versus Travon Court, there was some board yes. Supreme Court judgment para in one seven. Para 172. Yes. And it's, it starts, I won't repeat the passage. It says, in N. Adityan versus Travon Court, there was some board 2002 8 SCC 106, they're referring to the Supreme Court judgment. Yes. This court held that the appointment of a person who is not a Malayala Brahmin as a pujari or priest of a temple in Kerala. It, who is not a Malayali Brahmin has held the appointment of as uh, constitutionally after referring to various authorities as court held and then it repeats it repeats uh, paragraph 16 and paragraph 17 sir yes. finally this court held on uh, page 138 it says para 18 what I've just read out sir uh, it, it quotes uh, uh, the para 18 of the SEC uh, 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 print uh, uh, version. Oh, yes. Any custom or usage cannot be countenanced. I read that to you, sir. That that is specially uh, uh, quoted by the Constitution Bench of the Supreme Court. So we can see, sir, that the holding in Adityan has been basically uh. approvingly referred to in uh, 
a by a constitution bench and others as well but by a constitution bench relevant to shabarimala sir relevant yes. to shabarimala so the upshot of all this sir is to say that we are uh, this we are all we are bound by the adityan judgment on this narrow question can malayali malayala brahmin be a legitimate criterion or not now sir in the alternative in the alternative i'd like to make just uh, two arguments sir uh, and the alternative argument is uh, quite apart from the adityan judgment uh, is this permissible or not is is such a discrimination permissible or not if you say that adityan does not bind this this court and justifiably if you take that view naturally you will only do so justifiably um but if you take that view you still have to uh, uh, to uh, to deal with the question whether the constitution uh, allows caste uh, allows discrimination in favor of malayala brahmin and as was indicated sir in my written submissions i have gone into some detail here um the in my written submission sir in uh, argument 1 uh, sorry argument 2 i'm uh, i'm pointing out in my written submission that caste is a constitutionally prohibited criterion for selection and appointment to offices public offices sir my learned friend referred to the example that we discussed uh, before the proceedings began yes. i was saying sir if i at the uh, national judicial academy i give an advertisement uh -huh. that i want a driver for 3 weeks but he should be only a brahmin and he cannot apply for the next 10 years and he cannot leave the campus for those 10 days he is a purappada for purappada driver purappada, cannot leave the purappada campus purappada, <laughs> purappada brahmin driver will that stand scrutiny sir yes i made a small advertisement saying i want five year llb graduates not three year llb graduates that was promptly uh, promptly challenged mm. in in the uh, madhya pradesh high court saying how can you discriminate between five and three year and i don't want to go into that so the duration tenure of the appointment is different from the issue of discriminations discrimination prohibited discrimination and that brings me to the point sir it is one thing where a group like the gauda saraswat or many of the other groups that are mentioned in our cases sir, yes. which mentioned in our cases if they are having a practice we will only appoint we are not a denominational temple but we will only appoint we are we, we are a trust body or some other body we are appointing only brahmins it's different from when the state is a state is practicing casteism sir yes the state is saying we will only appoint brahmins Yes. So this puts it on a mentally different footing, sir. This is not a state in a supervisory or regulatory capacity, sir. What we are seeing here is not a traditional method of recruitment. It's a method of recruitment that the High Court put in place, sir, because the traditional uh, methods of recruitment had caused a collapse in many of these temples and the administration of these temples and widespread allegations of corruption. In the public interest, rightly, the High Court stepped in and and set out let's have proper procedures for recruitment. can the high court sir endorse a system of recruitment that is casteist that allows discrimination on the basis of caste can the state ignore art article 17 sir yes so state action has to be free of caste discrimination article 15 article 16 and article 17 so we have to take this issue very seriously sir that it is the state that is arguing that we will exclude non brahmins on what theory sir on what theory the second thing sir is that there is brahmin what is brahmin sir i've given the my written uh, sub submissions i won't repeat it yes. sir i've explained in in depth that brahmin is a social category sir it has been described by a catena of scholars as a system of social division it is not a system unlike 
what we have seen in Seshamal and other cases where the issue is that there is a, is a religious group that starts a temple or a religious institution, founds it, starts its own system, that denomination practices its own system of worship and, uh, and rituals. Yes. And that denomination is formed by, by worship and the temple. So the denomination exists around a religious belief and practice. But this is a social system, sir. It is not a religious system. How can you bring in a social division to determine who will be a male Shantis? Where will this end, sir? So therefore, this category called Brahmin, number one, is irrelevant to the question of criteria for undertaking puja and worship. It is, it is irre irrelevant to that. Yes. It is a discriminatory character, characteristics. It has excluded Brahmins only. No, no one. See, there were so many, so many apartheid types of practices in our country, which are constitution endings. So this is a socio-political category. Number one. Number two, the Devasom board itself admits in its counter, sir, that there are many Brahmins who are not entitled to, to conduct worship. So you now take a person who is not entitled to conduct worship because he's impure, a person who is not conducted, entitled to conduct worship, because, but though he's pure and is a Brahmin, but he does his, his particular situation within the Brahmin community is such that he cannot conduct worship. Yes. You're permitting the Brahmin to, con to apply and become male Shanti. Although he comes from a group within the Brahmin community that is traditionally not allowed to do worship, so he can violate tradition, but the non-Brahmin cannot. That is again, sir, a, a, an unjustified discrimination, yes. an unjustified classification, as I, I said last time, sir. And in, I've given uh, various uh, decisions, sir, to show that, uh, in, 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 including Indra Soni, KS Jayashree, where uh, which have said that caste cannot be taken into account, sir. As I said last time, sir, we this is a evil social practice disguised as essential religious, as traditional practice, sir. Great uh, thinker, philosopher Narayana Guru said that evil and good comes looking the same way, sir. They don't come dressed differently. That I'm evil and I'm good. They come in the same costume. What we have here is pure caste prejudice and the ideology underlying untouchability being presented yes. as traditional religious practice. It, it, it actually disrespects the religion. So the jurisprudence that has been developed is based fundamentally on respecting the religion's essential practices yes. and uh, trying to rid the community of these kinds of negative practices. Sir, in the uh, Adityan case, according the, in the Kerala judgment, sir, it is recorded that the Tevas, Devaswam board made a representation. Sir, Purban, Purban decision. Sorry, sir. Purban. Kerala High Court Kerala. judgment, sir. Yes, sir. According, there is a statement saying, according to the Devaswam board, there was no norm ever followed that Shanti Karan should be a Brahmin. That's what they, the, the Kerala High Court judgment records that this statement was made to them. Which is a paragraph? Sir. I'll give you the paragraph, sir. We'll come back to the paragraph. It may be seven, paragraph seven. Yes, sir. Paragraph 7, sir. Paragraph seven. I'll read it. According to the board, there was no norm ever followed that Shanti Karan, Malayalam word for Shanti, should be a Brahmin. On the, other, uh, on the other hand, candidates, irrespective of their caste, have been appointed as Shanti caste in various temples. So they're narrowing it to saying this is only a problem for Shabarimala temples. But Shabarimala temple is not above the law, sir. And not above, and not entitled to practice untouchability. So this is a practice of untouchability, sir. Saying that only a Malayala Brahmin can be a priest, a uh, uh, male Shanti of, of uh, Shabri Mala is a practice of untouchability, sir.
And why should we victimize Shabarimala temple, sir, which, which is a temple to which people of all creeds, castes from all over the country go, sir, <laughs> in, in great faith and devotions. Why are we forcing it, sir? A, a group of people are forcing it to be subjugated by the practice of untouchability. We have to liberate that temple, sir, from this untouchability. Sir, um, Now the question, sir, is Malayala Brahmin a caste? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Sir, the, uh, sir, then the, if, if I may, sir, with your permission, proceed. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm almost done, sir. The, um, the, 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 the question is, is Malayala Brahmin a caste, sir? Is Malayala Brahmin a caste? And there I have provided again details in my, uh, um, written submission, sir. Uh, chapter 6 of the 1884 report by V. Nagamaya on the 1881 Travancore census is titled caste. Is titled caste. There are 81 castes listed on page 180 in their quote-unquote order of importance in the Hindu social scale. The first listed caste is Malayala Brahmin. Of course, caste is a class, sir. As Indra Soni has said, caste is a class. We can always say Brahmin is a class. That's not, that's not relevant to this discussion, sir. The question is, is it a caste? An 1884 report by Nagamaya, Travancore census, on the 1881 Travancore census, lists 81 castes, and the first caste listed is Malayala Brahmin. Chapter 9 of the Travancore State Ma Manual, Volume 2, 1906, by V. Nagamaya, is entitled Caste. Under this chapter, the Travancore State Manual describes castes in Travancore, castes in Travancore, and states that there are practically speaking about 1050 subdivisions of caste in Travancore. The Jati Nirnayam makes mention of only 72 principal castes in Malabar, including eight classes of Brahmins. It says the term Brahmin is derived from Brahma, the creator, from whose mouth the Brahmins are said to have sprung, and hence their caste name. They are also termed Dvijas and Bhumi Devas, meaning twice born and lords of the earth, respectively. There are 10 divisions of Brahmins of India, in which a group of five is known as Pancha Gaudas, and the other group of five, the Pancha Dravidas. The Pancha Dravidas are number one, Malayala Brahmins. Number two, Tamil Brahmins. Number three, Canaries Brahmins. Number four, Telugu Brahmins. Number five, Maharashtra Brahmins. Yes, they are a class, but a class which is a caste long recognized. The Travancore State Manual enumerates at page 249251-286-287 two types of Malayali Brahmins, Nambudiris and Potis. The Travancore State Manual uh, enumerates seven types of Nambudiris. I'm not going into that detail. It also refers to sub three subcasts of Nambudiris. So sir, it is very, very clear, sir, that the different uh, the, the, uh, that historically there's uh, you know Edgar Thurston's caste and tribes of India also um, recognizes Malayala Brahmin as a caste. So it's very clear, sir, that certainly for well into the 19th century at least, Malayala Brahmin is a caste, mm -hmm. and no doubt about it. And as far as caste is concerned, we know how the law has uh, has treated it, sir. Um, lastly, sir, I want to end on this basis, end with where I began in my last submission, because 
there are two simple, straightforward ways that I understand the issues before this court. So number one is, is it bound by the Adityan Supreme Court judgment or not? If it is, then it is binding. Sir. It is binding. That, and the judgment is very clear that you cannot have a criterion for Malayala Brahmin for you know, for any, for in any, even to hire a temporary cook, let alone hire a temporary shanti, you cannot have it. The second issue is, sir, that as I said last time, what the Devaswam board has done is made a number of classifications, which is which is which is okay, sir. They've said you should have X experience, X age, X educational qualification. That's all fine, but criteria number one says that you must be Malayala Brahmin uh, amongst inter alia. Now, there they are creating a, two categories of as, aspiring people, people who aspire to be male shanti, not even apply, but aspire to be male shanti or interested in applying. One is Brahmin and the other is Malayala Brahmin and the other is non-Malayala Brahmin. Now, Article 14 says you cannot discriminate on the basis of caste. Article 50, sorry, uh, Article uh, uh, 15 prohibits discrimination. So 14 gives a right to equality and equal protection of the law. Article 15 says you cannot discriminate on the basis of caste as a, an expression of Article 14. But the Supreme Court and the High Courts judiciary has said that equality does not mean that you cannot discriminate, but the discrimination must be reasonable. Yes. And the, we have had the test of reasonableness, as you know, sir, better than me, uh, applied through two tests. One is that there must be intellig intelligible differentia. And second, that the inter intelligible differentia must have a nexus with the object Objects. sought to be achieved. Now that has evolved, sir, now into uh, arbitrariness, it, it, it gone beyond reasonable classification, saying that uh, arbitrariness is a violation of Article 14 and that it, there must be reasonableness also. So it's, it's become deeper and broader. So the idea of, of uh, the necessity for, for the discrimination to be uh, legal and legitimate has become stronger. Now, when you apply this, sir, first of all, the criteria are not intelligible, sir. As my learned friend also said, it's not very clear who are covered, who are not by the word Malayala Brahmin, because there are many of these categories and sub subcategories. Plus, there is no official. So I can't go to the village office and get a certificate saying I'm a Malayala Brahmin, sir. I can get an OBC certificate. I can get, get some other certificates. But there is no certification system. There is no official. There should not be. And there isn't an official system. There's not even a census sir, of this. The government has refused to even do a census on this. Yes. So how do you prove? How do you know a claim, a claim is not false? It's that the intelligible uh, differentia are not even practically implementable, sir. Even if you if you uphold this as the High Court, how will it be implemented, sir? How will it be implemented? How will you prevent fraud? The, the criteria are not intelligible. Second, sir, what is the nexus with the Travancore Devasom Board? Sir, if Article, sorry, Section 31 uh, of the Act. Sir, uh, thank you. Yes, sir. 31. Uh, and then we look at the preamble to the Act. Sir, at, uh, Section 31. Uh, of the Travanco Cochin Hindu Religious Institutions Access. Subject to the provisions of this part and the rules made thereunder, the board shall manage the properties and affairs of the Devaswams, both incorporated and unincorporated as heretofore, and arrange for, this is the important part, sir, arrange for the conduct of the daily worship and ceremonies and of the festivals in every temple according to its usage. And another provision is also there, that is 15A. Duties of the board. 15, Which one, sir? Section 15A. 15A. Is yes, available sir. at stage number 12. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Duties of the board. It shall be the duty of the board to perform the following functions to see that regular traditional rites and ceremonies, according to the practice prevalent in the religious institutions, are performed promptly. Sir, this does not refer to caste. It refers to 
observing the usages and, and traditions of the temple. So if there are usages and traditions, we need evidence of that. We cannot have, just have a bold claim. Mm. And uh, as uh, uh, then senior counsel Rohinton Nariman argued, this has not been pleaded, sir. It has not been pleaded. The evidence has not been put in evidence before the court. It's not been pleaded. So we have to disregard it, sir. That, that, that this is not in order to uphold any usage. Plus, as I said, that they have themselves submitted to the Kerala High Court as recorded in his judgment that there was no such, there is no such requirement, sir. Yeah, that, that I've said, but simply as a matter of fact, sir, they have not pleaded it. They've denied it, sir. They have denied it. I'm not denying it. According to the Kerala High Court, they have denied that there is such a, such a tradition, sir. So I think we cannot accept that. Sir. So I, I feel, sir, in conclusion, if you'll permit me to say this, sir, oh. that I feel that uh, there was some bodies in contempt of the Supreme Court, sir. Mm. And we have to look into the matter, ask, consult with, my, with uh, Mr. Rajesh and my clients to see whether we should move a contempt petition of the Supreme Court, sir, against the Devasum board yes. for having violated its, uh, the, the judgments of the, the clear, clear decisions of the Supreme Court on a number and uh, 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 approved and endorsed in 2015-2018, uh, sir. Yes. So I think we are, we, this is a a, a great uh, uh, a matter of deep and great widespread concern, sir, that uh, we have to end this practice of untouchability and um, uh, we have to ensure that properly qualified, properly trained people conduct worship in accordance to genuine proven traditions and usage yes. to, to satisfy the beliefs of, of those who uh, believe in Shabrimala and in other temples. Yes. Sir, thank you very much for this opportunity, sir. I'm most grateful to you. Thank you.